We believe that the heart of God is for all nations to feel welcome and find a home in churches where the truth is preached. Nous croyons que la volonté de Dieu est pour toutes les nations de se accueillir et puis joindre les gens dans l'église de la vérité à prêcher. On behalf of Multicultural Ministries and your local church, we welcome you today. Thank you for being a part of All Nations Sunday. In Matthew chapter 28, Jesus commissioned his disciples to go and teach all nations. In Acts chapter 1, he revealed that when receiving his promise, individuals would be filled with power. Power to become witnesses of him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. And Multicultural Ministries, we are working to fulfill this biblical mandate by reaching out to every culture that is coming to North America. Currently, we have 16 ethnic-focused ministries, three culturally-focused ministries, and four full-time missionaries who are focused on evangelizing nationalities here in North America. We also have the Global Tracks website that provides soul-winning materials translated in more than 60 languages. The heartbeat of the UPCI is God's heart to reach every nation with His gospel globally and here at home. So in partnership with your local church, we invite you to give in a sacrificial offering today that will support the ongoing work of multicultural ministries. This offering will enable us to reach more nations with the gospel. 40% of this offering will stay in your local district and support multicultural ministry endeavors in your area. Our proximity to the Great Commission has never been closer as the world has come to North America. We honor every culture of people who are represented here today. Thank you for your prayers and for your support. I am the UPCI. I am the UPCI. I am the UPCI. United Pentecostal I am the United Pentecostal Church. I am the UPCI. Amen. I'm glad to be a part of an organization and a church that loves people. All people, all kinds. Amen. And I'm thankful that they have in their illustrations, and I don't think this is brand new, but they also have uh, introduced, I'll say it wrong, ALS. American Sign Language, because it's a language, amen? And, you know, a lot of times we, you know, we came from a culture, most of us, and I'll say that, you know, being probably older than, I'm probably the middle average maybe age, is we come from cultures that we are self-absorbed in our own worlds because that's all we knew. We grew up in a local place, but now we're much, it's much easier to cross boundaries and you know, go places and be places. A lot of us from are not from here. If you're not from born in Georgia, raised in Georgia, raise your hand. Amen. So, see, I would say well over half are not born and raised here. I was born and raised here. Somebody asked me, um, man, I might have been dreaming. I don't know. Oh, it was Sister Rose. I was trying to think of who was I, was I riding with yesterday to ask me where I was born. I was born and raised here, maybe like a six-month stint in another country. I lived there for about six months in Alabama. If you all have heard of that? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it didn't take us long to get back to home. No, I, there was nothing wrong there. It just was a job thing my dad was involved with that didn't, I guess, I don't even know the whole story. I just know we came back home. I think he was missing mama. And so being raised, we were kind of raised around that area. So anyways, I'm, I'm thankful to be a part of a church that is not just me. Amen, not just me. This has helps us in a lot of different areas. So thankful that you're here today. I do want us to remember that this Saturday, uh, at 4 o'clock, we do have our uh, fall festival. 
There's going to be food, fun, games, all kind of things taking place. That's just a lot of good things to get into and to remind us that it's fall, y'all. Amen. Thank God for fall. Thank God it's getting cooler. Amen. It won't last long enough, I promise you. I, I don't ever get tired. I, in Georgia, I don't ever get tired of the cold. Now, I've been a couple places that I was tired of the cold in about 10 minutes. We went to Maine one time and was at the Maine headlight, I think is what they call it. It's a lighthouse, and it was so cold there, it felt like ice was just blowing straight through my bones. And so that's cold. And so I, I appreciate the, the cold here. So, But we're glad that you're here today and look forward to having you on this uh, fall festival even there will be fire if you're cold you can go stand by the fire you can cook your food by the fire so we do appreciate the all of the effort that's going into this and this is a very exciting and a very busy time of the year but we're excited to take time today to set aside to acknowledge all of the nations that are represented in our church and the friends and family in this community so glad to have you here today and so now we have a special presentation and we're going to have scripture reading uh, in several different languages. So God bless them as they as you interpret. Praise the Lord. Alabanza sea al Señor. Yeah. I'll be reading from Joel chapter 2, 28 and 29 in Spanish. Y después de esto derramaré mi espíritu sobre toda carne y profetizarán vuestros hijos y vuestras hijas, vuestros ancianos soñarán sueños y vuestros jóvenes verán visiones. Y también sobre a los siervos y a las siervas derramaré mi espíritu en aquellos días. Amén. Does anyone here speak French, understand French? I just want to make sure I get a passing grade. All right. De même que Moïse a élevé le serpent dans le, dans le désert, de même le Fils de l'homme doit être élevé, afin que quiconque croit ait la vie éternelle en lui. Car Dieu a tant aimé le monde qu'il a donné son Fils unique, afin que quiconque croit en lui ne périsse point, mais qu'il ait la vie éternelle. Car Dieu n'a pas envoyé son Fils dans le monde pour juger le monde, mais pour sauver le monde par lui. Praise the Lord. I'll be reading Matthew 28, 18 to 20 in Jamaican Creole. Pat was, my soul, my nerve was. And Jesus come and chat to them, say, All power is given unto me in a heaven and in a earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost. Teach them to observe everything whatsoever I command you. And lo, me they are with you all the way, even to the end of the world. Amen. I'll be reading Acts 2, 37 through 39 in Portuguese. Ora, quando ouviram isto, comprimaram-se no coração e disseram a Pedro e aos demais apóstolos, homens, irmãos, que faremos? Então Pedro lhe disse, aprendei-vos e cada um de vós seja batizado em nome de Jesus Cristo para a remissão dos pecados e recebereis o dom do Espírito Santo. Porque a promessa é para vós e para vossos filhos, E para todos os que estão longe, a tantos quantos o Senhor nosso Deus os chamare. Praise the Lord. 
I will read on this, uh, Revelation 7, 19 in Spanish. Después de esto miré y aquí una gran multitud la cual nadie podía contar y de todas naciones y tribus y pueblos y lenguas que estaban delante del trono y en la presencia del Cordero vestido de ropas blancas y con palmas en las manos y clamaban a gran voz diciendo la salvación pertenece a nuestro Dios que está sentado en el trono y al Cordero. Amén. Oh, I was going to do it in. I was trying. I was going to do it in German. You want to take my part? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Scripture is full of promises to the whole world, to all nations, tribes, and tongues. This year in our home school, we are doing Bible class with Sister Darla, working through the Book of Acts. Each lesson includes a missionary highlight, and it's wonderful to see how God is saving people around the globe in all nations, tribes, and tongues. We can, we can and do support missionaries, but the commands to reach all nations are for us too. Here in Warner Robins, the international city, many or most countries of the world are represented. With the immigration crisis that our country is facing right now, the world is pouring in. Is God making provision for us to reach them? Probably most people here know at least one person from a different country. Jesus said in Mark 16, 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Today we focus on the need to reach all people and ask that we make it a matter of prayer to be a witness to our diverse population, to reach out to our community, to be all that God wants us to be for him. So as part of, we placed an application with the United Pentecostal Church to do a multicultural Spanish work. And to do that, you have to present uh, demographics of the people in your area. And so I did that, and I also presented that to our staff at the last, last year's planning. And what we know, I said what we know is, is that the world has come to our doorstep that there are people of all different kinds. And we, as the church of God and the people of God, can spend all of our time thinking about where God wants us to go when he has put us where he wants us to be. I said we can spend all of our time thinking about where God wants us to go and never do, you see how I swapped that up a little bit for you, and never do what he has called us to be because we think that it's somewhere else, it's some other, and there is a, a world of people here at our back doorstep that is waiting to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And in all kind of languages, or it, it could even be a, a language that you're not familiar with, but it is a language that touches the heart of somebody and it represents children of God, amen. So I'm thankful to be uh, a part of that family today. And so we're gonna stand and why don't we uh, go to the Lord. We're going to take up an offering at this time. We're going to pray for this offering. And this is a special offering this morning. Everything that comes in, I know Brother Brock said that 40% would stay at the district. That is our annual multicultural. But this is going to be 100% of what comes in the offering today will go to multicultural ministries. And so we will send that in. So if you are interested in doing that this morning, then we would like for you to give in the offering. And we just want to ask the Lord to prepare our hearts as we give this morning. We love you and we thank you, Lord, for all that you've, you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, for the many lives and souls that are represented here. And we just ask you this morning that you would have your way in this place, that your hand would be upon us, Lord, your anointing would flow, and that our life and our heart would be changed as we leave this place. I pray that you'll bless this offering, those that can give, and the work that it's going to do through us. I pray that you would bless all of this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You are free to come and give at this time.
Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Has he given you a reason to dance?
to give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We love you, Jesus. He is King of kings and Lord of lords. Amen. Why don't you find someone, shake their hand, welcome them here. We have a special treat for you this morning. God bless you. You can be seated if you'd like.
was a great undertaking, not on my part. I just had to do my place, but appreciate Brother Billy and them. Total new system. If you don't understand what's going on, these little mics right here, it picks up a rat running across the floor, literally. So there's a lot of delicate situations I have to say. I appreciate those guys, the work they did, Sister Carrie and all the team for doing that. Why can't we give them a hand? Amen. <laughs> I'm proud that we have young worshipers on our team. Amen. I'm so yes. thankful to see young yes. people on our team. Amen. There's a place for you here. And I hope that this next year proves this out with all my heart. That if you are in this church, if you are a toddler and you can proclaim the name of Jesus and you want to hand out a track, whatever you want to do, you can do it in Jesus' name. Every hand in the middle of the wheel. Amen. So thankful for the goodness of God. We're going to go sing. We're going to sing one more song. And we're going to ask you just to worship God with us as we sing. It's a good song, not just because that we're singing it, but it's called Gratitude. One more time, why don't we give the Lord a hand clap of praise. I'll praise you again and again. 
Just say the word hallelujah as you worship him right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. We love you, God. Love you, Jesus. Wow. That's why I throw up my hands again and again. <laughs> That's why I do it. Amen. I know I've got nothing else fit for a king, but I have this word, I have this praise, I have this song that you've given me to sing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, amen. If you would turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 56. The greatest churches in the world have many people groups in them, amen. So glad to be a part and have the opportunity to have um, different people groups represented here this morning. And we all stand this morning, we'll get into that in our message, but we all stand as one family. It's been mentioned in the foyer this morning, we stand as one family, covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, amen? And so we're here to thankful, or here to uh, thank the name of Jesus Christ for all of his goodness, his mercy, and all that he has done for us. He's a great, great God. Amen. Isaiah 56. 
We're not here today to celebrate in a particular people group. Amen. But just to celebrate the fact that there is one blood, one body that we can be baptized in and we can have, we can have redemption in that body and we can serve God together. Amen. What an awesome privilege that is. Isaiah 56 and verse 7, Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon mine altar, for mine house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Lord, we love you. We thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Just ask you, Lord God, that your spirit would permeate this place, God, that it would touch each and every life that's represented here today, that we might leave this place different than we came. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. I'm glad to be a part of the body of Christ. You know, I, I already mentioned this fact, and uh, being born here, raised here, um, there are certain things that try to take hold of you in certain places, and I believe that uh, different places have their own uh, challenges. Uh, Different places have their own, if you'll pardon me for saying so, I hope this isn't uh, too much to say for us this morning, but there's spiritual strongholds that are in this city because of the city that it is. But we must recognize that. And we must say, Lord, what, what should we do on our, what's our part to play in this? And so we come to battle against those spirits. Amen. And, um, you know, I was convicted yesterday in a, in a message that I was listening to uh, at our children's ministry that we, we often don't teach how to fight. Amen? We, we hand out the, the armor, we hand out the sword, we hand out the shield, we hand out the breastplate, we hand out the different parts of the armor, but we don't teach how to wear it and how to, how to function in that armor. Now, some people might say, well, we'll just be like David and walk out on the, but, but we're, we have this, the armor that's here in the New Testament for us to put on, put on the whole armor of God, amen, so we can stand against the enemy, and we can withstand him, amen, and so uh, we must put on the armor of God, and we must fight, there is a call to fight, so and we, as a part of this, this international city that it has been titled, uh, there are different things that people bring to the table, you'll bring something to the table, uh, and we'll just call it baggage, if you will, um, I brought different baggage to this table because I've been raised here. Um, and then there will be those that will that'll bring baggage from other places here. And so we have to get those under the blood and get the blood applied. I am thankful that I'm not the man that I used to be. Amen. I'm thankful that I'm not the man that some of you knew me to be. Amen. And so I'm very thankful for that. And I hope that we give each other the same grace that um, is given to us by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because we are to do the same. We are to share the same grace one for another. I'm glad that there is a fellowship of brothers and sisters in this house that are eager to get together and worship the Lord. And I'm thankful that we have this place to assemble and to offer this community as a house of worship. And we are offering this place as a place for this community to gather. There are several things that we do as a church that it's my heartbeat to do. We have a groups, a couple of groups that meet here, and um, they they do give an offering. Um, one of them does uh, rent a specific place, and because they do that at a certain place, a certain time, they do rent it. But we also have parking and things that are available that we want to be a service to our community, not just to be a church and say you come be like us or you can't be part of us. So we want to be uh, we want to be a service to our community, our food bank is a service to our community, and we love our community. If we don't love our community, we're none of his. Amen? <laughs> Who is my neighbor? That's another study, amen? And we should uh, honor that and look for it in God's word because we are to uh, love our neighbors as ourself. And there should never be a place in the body of Christ for groups and cliques, and such is that. Amen. There's not a place for it in this church to separate off and make your own little thing go. Um, your body handles that kind of thing in a particular fashion. And the older you get, some of you young people who have such pretty nice skin, God bless you. So thankful for you. So thankful for a reminder of what I used to be. 
but I got places on my body that uh, something of a foreign matter entered into my on my legs. I have this not it's not like everywhere. Okay, I'm like you, I'm trying to clear the picture up. Where there's a couple places where I was weed eating as a child and a piece of wire that my dad had this great idea that when you anybody ever weed eat chain link fence and that weed string just eats right up. And so he bought it with wire in it and said, "Go ye therefore into the front yard." And <laughs> so I went about my father's business. And so these pieces of wire made their way into my leg, you know, just little short pieces. And, you know, so you'll get, your body will reject those things. Amen. And that's what clicks in the church is. It's where the body has rejected certain things. And you don't want to be a part of that. Amen. There are certain things natural that happens because the Lord made us such ways. But there should never be a place for division. There should never be a place for gangs in the church. Amen. Amen. (laughs) <laughs> this should be a safe place for us to come into and feel like we're together. Amen? We're, we're all kinds of people in here. If, and I, I like to think of myself as sort of middle of the road because I'm not overly extrovert and I'm not overly introvert. I am more introverted than I am extroverted. Somebody say, I don't believe that. But it's the fact, Jack. Send me somewhere I don't know people and you'll find me in the corner shaking in my shoes until I find somebody either I know or that looks like, or acts like me, or thinks like me. You know what I'm saying? We find that commonality, and then we can breathe. Oh, somebody here like me, you know, which you don't know what my, like me means. It's not pretty anyway. But there should be a place in the church for everybody. And I do consider myself to be privileged to lift up my hands that were once stained with non-innocent blood. I was guilty. I had Blood on my hands, amen. They were stained with innocent blood, amen. But I'm glad that today I can lift my hands and worship God in spirit and in truth because he's redeemed me. And he looked beyond my faults. He looked beyond the things that were contrary to him. But the adversary of our soul would like to pick us off and to divide us off into different places and, you know, to make us think that we are alone, And we can feel that way in the church if we're not careful, to feel alone. Uh, You know, people in ministry often feel alone because you're proclaiming a truth that doesn't always sit well. Amen? And so we all should know what that probably feels like. Unfortunately, we probably all know what that feels like. But we don't seek to to promote that within the church. The enemy is trying to divide us. And we are blessed to know unity and fellowship But on the other hand, we have an adversary that works against us. He's cunning. His tactics are time-tested and proven. But guess what? There's still no match for the presence of God. I said, although the enemy's tactics are time-tested and proven, and he works skillfully with those, he cannot match those against the power of God. So there is a standard that will come against the enemy if the church will do its job. And the church has got to do this job. And the Bible says that you will, they will know you by your love one for another. Amen? And, and you know, it doesn't always come right readily apparent. You're, you're with your family, whoever that is here today, whether it's just you and your wife or you and your husband, or you're a family of six or whatever. And there can be things in life that begin to roll along monotonously, and you wafed out into these areas and I've got two little girls in my house that they uh, fight not like cats and dogs but I don't even know what a good illustration is it's just kind of oh what in the world y'all been doing this for two days but now it hurts she hit me y'all been doing this for two days so the other night about 12 30 I get up and I do my rounds through the house and Got my little spotlight, poof, doing my checks. And I go in Courtney's room, nobody. Nobody. So now my rate's up a little bit, so I run across into the other room, and there's Chloe in her bed. Courtney on the floor. I'm like, what in the world? In the daytime, you fight, and in the night, you sleep in the same room together. I didn't say that life would be perfect in the church. 
but don't test me with my brother. The devil's not going to come against you and not have to come through the word of God, the presence of God, the house of God, the people of God. These things are set up in order, amen, so that we have a defense against these tactics of the enemy. And we have plenty of scripture that lets us know that God has put us together as he sees fit. Amen. We have to understand that because in this day and time, we may not like where we were put. Physically may not like where God has us. But the Bible says that he puts us in the body as he sees fit. That means you were born in the right family. Come on, can I get a witness? Can I get a witness? Well, I don't like mine. Well, that was the one that God put you in as he saw fit. Amen. He put you in the right work environment, in the right school. Amen. Come on, help me out a little bit. He put you in the right community. Amen. But what we get is this desire to move and to do our thing. And we get, well, I think we frustrate God because we want to do what we want to do. But he put us in the body as he saw fit to reach together as one to this world. And very early in God's word, we are given notice of this very fact. The psalmist writes this in Psalms 133 and 1. Behold, how good. And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together. I just wish he just left it at that, for them to dwell together. But he says, in unity. There's some work on our part that has to be done. It's good and pleasant when we dwell together in unity. Because we also know what it's like not to. But there is a place for everyone in the house of God. Even the New Testament gives us a glimpse of how the church should love. John 13 and 35 again says this, what we had just mentioned. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, because if you love one another. I said because earlier, but the scripture actually says if you love. So, Brother Tom, that's one of the instances where don't kick me out of the church just because I said it wrong. You get the rest of the 65%, right? He was doing. He did a great job this morning in helping us to understand. that. I, I, I don't know if you're trying to make me feel better, but I appreciate it. If, only, if I only say 65% of what's right, you can get enough of that in your crawl that's going to help you, amen? But we can also hear 1% that is wrong and become bitter and turned against the word of God. So it's good and pleasant for us to dwell together in unity. A church that is known by all as a church that loves all. A church that's known by all as a church that loves all. Amen, that's getting harder and harder. Because the world wants to force us because we don't say certain words and we don't do certain things that we don't love. You can't, you know, all, my kids can say all day, day long I don't love them because I don't do what they want me to do. But they can't tell me I don't love them. Amen? I'm the one that says I love you. I'm the one that proves I love you. And it's not based on what you think I ought to do. It's on, based on the fact that I do what is right by you. Amen? And there's a place for everyone. There's certainly, this is certainly not the case in the world all the time because the world does not share this worldview. But this love that is shared by us, we have this love because we have the redemptive nature of God when we are baptized with the Spirit of God. Amen? That's why the Bible says that if you do not have the Spirit of God, you're none of His. How can we say that we have love if we don't have his spirit in us? Because we're not even in the ball game yet. We have to have the spirit of God to be able to demonstrate that love to our fellow man. Amen? You don't believe this? Go home and let yourself get in the flesh and let your neighbor throw his garbage over the fence into your yard. Amen? You'll get out of sorts. But we have to have this love for one another and our neighbor as ourselves. So this is certainly not a worldview that is shared by our world today. But we didn't come up with the idea that it's good to respect all people. We didn't come up with the idea that it's good to love all people. We didn't come up with the idea that this is a church that ought to love all people. This is a biblical mandate that God has given to us. That we, he has shown us. He has demonstrated this to us. And Peter says in Acts 10 and 34, it says, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Romans 2 and 11 says, For there is no respect of persons with God. 
Amen? And that goes all kind of different ways. This type of respect is not just found in the act of showing kindness and love. This type of respect is not just found in giving to those less fortunate. This type of respect is not just found in the accommodation of opinions that might differ from our own. This type of love is shown when we honor him as Lord of Lord, King of Kings, ruler over all things, and we submit ourselves to his lordship. Amen. Amen. I understand that our world thinks that it loves. I understand that people in this world think that they love. But you cannot truly show an individual love until you have received the love of God. Till it has pierced your heart and soul. Till it has poured itself out into your being. Amen? Because that's the song that says, well, you know, I really came in here with my credentials today. I really came in here with all this and that. But now I'm just going to have to stand up and say, I got nothing but this song. I got nothing but this hallelujah. Raise my hands and surrender. That's all I got. That's what the, we talked about the soil a little bit this morning. If your soil is in the condition that it says, I got nothing, I need something from you. That's the only way we're going to receive something in the presence of God. This type of love is shown by God's sovereignty and recognizing his sovereignty as being Lord over all. This type of love is also shown in his righteous judgment of all men. Not just his righteous love, but his righteous judgment. Amen? Knowing that he's going to hold me accountable. Amen? Righteous love, righteous judgment. Righteous love, righteous judgment. They go hand in hand. And it's, it's, it's beginning to numb my brain a little bit, and I've kind of had to separate myself from it because I realize that it's too easy for us just to say, boom, that's the way it's supposed to be. Whoa, wait a second. He is a righteous God. He is a God of love, but he's also a righteous God, and he will judge us. He's sovereign. It's him over everything. And if we don't recognize him as that, then we'll get our uh, self twisted up. Amen. He's, he is fair, he is just, and he is righteous. I wanted to read you a portion of scripture from Acts 17. I read a little bit of it last night, not, not knowingly and not intentionally, uh, but this is the, the above that part. <clears throat> it says in Acts 17 and 22, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. We live in a very superstitious world. And uh, everything is a conspiracy you know, everything's, you know, we live in a very superstitious world. For as I pass by, I beheld your devotions. We, hear, we do live in a world where people are very devoted to their causes. Very devoted to their causes. And I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God. We have people in this world today that are worshiping gods that they set up as gods, but it is not the one true God. They want a God like him in certain aspects of him, but not in totality of him, amen? Not in total. Whom you therefore ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything. Seeing he giveth to all life and breath in all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him, and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of your poets have said, for we are also his offerings. For as much then as you are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone, graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. There is a place for everyone, but there is also a time when we will have to be known of him, not just know who he is. So although we gather as one here today, we worship as one. We sing as one. We know him to be God. 
the scripture says that there'll have to come a time when you recognize him as God. And he will know you. Amen. I want to be known of him. Verse 31, because he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. That, this is what that scripture said. He proved who he was. Your turn. Amen. He's proven who he is. Our turn. He's proven that he's taken a step in our direction. It's our turn. And so today, this passage clearly tells us that there is this great and mighty God who is known of, but not known by all. He's known of. Somewhere deep in the inside of us, we want to acknowledge that there is a God, but we want to construct him to be the God that we want him to be. And in that, that takes relationship. Amen? That takes relationship. We were talking the other day, and, and Sister Carrie and I, and I said something. She looked at me, and I, I said, yeah, you know, I, I bet there's still stuff about each of us we don't know about each other. And we was actually talking in a group, too, and there was four or six of us around. And there's stuff about us that we've been living together all our lives in this room, coming to church together all our lives. And possibly there's still a great amount about each other we don't know. But he wants to know us. He wants to have a relationship with us. There are many that have inscribed their understanding of this great God in all types and manners upon all kinds of mediums. But in the end, it still says to the unknown God. We profess with our mouths, but our heart is far from him. You may have erected something in your life that says, I love Jesus. But if you don't know him, you can't say that you love him. Amen. Because you don't know what his requirements are. I can say I love Brother Phil, and I do say I love Brother Phil. But it is not in the same manner as I love my wife. Because I don't want to know him like that. Sorry, Brother Phil. Sorry. I did not intend to bring all that out. That didn't. But how bad do you want to know God? Because you want to know him, you're going to have to get in relationship with him. You're going to have to have him inscribe his name on your heart. Not you go and erect a statue that says to the unknown God, but for him to put his name on you. The scripture says that we wear his name in baptism. We put him on his banner. Amen. We fly his banner. We are in relationship with him. And if we're not careful, we will find ourselves in a casual relationship with God that means nothing. Amen. Plenty, 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 plenty of this goes on in our world. Amen. These casual relationships that produce nothing of value except for nothing more than a brief feeling of comfort or satisfaction or whatever you want to call it. We've applied ourselves to all kinds of mediums to give us a brief, a brief feeling of euphoria, whether it be through drugs, alcohol, and superficial relationships but God says today I want a relationship with you that stands the test of time but not really just time the test of all eternity amen I, I still go back and watch some of a general conference and because I love I love I love brother Bernard's message about the zeal of thine house has eaten me up and I found a scripture that I don't think I've ever read. I had to have read it before, but I found another scripture. I can't wait to talk to you about it. But when I see him and his age, and I'm not saying he's an old man, but when he gets ate up, that's relationship with God. That's something that you can't just conjure up. When you get excited, when you... And I'm just going to be personal today. When you're trying to sing a song and all you can get is the frog, the lump in your throat that says, "I really, you know what, just dawned on me. I don't have anything else to bring. I'm the pastor of this church and there's nothing else I can bring him. I can't bring him a gift that's more special than yours than my praise. 
It's all I've got to give him, and that's what he wants. He desires our praise. The Scripture says he inhabits. How close do you want him to be? I'll let him in my home, but that's not close enough. Will you build him a house? We will build you a house of praise. Amen. And he'll be pleased to dwell there. If you'll build him a house of praise, he will. It's not, just, it's not just worship of a moment. It's not just a profession of a moment. He desires a relationship with us. Not to be known as the unknown God, but to be known by and to be known of us. A place where that we have made a place for him within our bodies. And so the scripture says, that he desires to dwell in you. Amen. Do we believe the scripture? That he, do, he desires to dwell in us. In a little while I'll be with you, but I shall be in you. So how do we get this process started that we desire to have with God? If we desire a relationship and we know that we are unclean, we know that we might not be right with God. Amen. So how do we get there? The Bible says that we have to repent. Amen. Just a little bitty Bible study here this morning. We have to repent of our sins and tell God, I'm sorry. I want to be in relationship with you, but there's something between me and you, and I want that to be removed, so I'm sorry. And then you got to do something with the garbage that's in our life. We've got to have it removed from our life. And so what do we do? We are baptized in his name for the washing away of our sins. The removal of our sins. And the Bible says once we've done that, once we've told him that we're sorry, once we've been baptized and our sins have been washed away, now he says, I will take up residence inside of you and you will know this because you will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. Amen. And it's so very important that we understand this and that we get God inside of us. He wants and desires he wants and desires the very best for us. And often the very best that we can attempt to do is to erect some superstitious statue in his honor that pays such small obeisance to the fact that he has given everything for us. Oh, it's true. It's very true. In him we live and we move and we have our being. In him we live, we move. In him. But if he's not in us, and we are not in him. We've got to have him in us. Do we really live? Are we really alive? Are we any more than just a complex bundle of cells and emotions that this world will try to tell us that we are if we do not have his spirit living inside of us? Romans 8 and 14 says, For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Where they're led by the spirit of God. John 1 John 3 and 1 says, Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. 1 John 3 and 2. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. This song is written... And I like the song, and I remember the year that it was introduced at NAYC. I think it was the first year that it was introduced. I think it was published by one of our very own. And it was introduced at NAYC, and it was I Am a Friend of God. And we sang it every service. Anybody remember that, NAYC, where it was I Am a Friend of God, I Am a Friend of God, I Am a Friend of God. But is there not more to be said than that we're just friends of God? He's made a way for us to become the sons and daughters of God. Heirs and joint heirs. And if I, if you truly desire to be of one blood and of one body, we must become the sons of God and daughters of God. Ephesians 4, 4 through 6, there is one body, one spirit, even as you are called and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. It is possible that we sign the adoption papers today and say, I want to be part of the family of God because there is a place for everyone 
in the family of God. Amen. Going back to Acts 17, verse 26, it says, And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of the habitation, that they should seek the Lord, if haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Why is this so important that we should seek after God? And the scripture says, they can seek after me, and happily they find me. I'm not far away. You'll find me, even though I'm not far away. So just like my little dog, I chunk a tennis ball out there, and he goes running. He's looking around, looking around. He's like right there, right there, right there. He's just sitting there looking around, looking around. I got to walk out there and put my hand on it. He's like, oh, yeah, right there. The Lord is not far from you today. And you say, well, I've been seeking, I've been seeking, I've been seeking. Let me tell you something. He is here. And the Bible says we have not because we ask not. And so we ought to open our hearts today and say, Lord, I want you in here. Why is this so important? Because he hath appointed a day. There is a day coming. There is a day coming, and it's appointed a day in the which that he will judge the world in righteousness. Why? Because we've heard. We know he will judge in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. That is the important part. He sent Jesus Christ, came in the form of, he sees the, the word became flesh, robed himself in flesh, and dwelt among us. And we know that because he did what? He gave his life for us. Amen? And so we have been given that, we have been given that word, and he can judge righteously because of Jesus Christ. Wherefore, he hath given assurance unto all men in that he hath raised him from the dead. Not just did he come, not just that he lived, not just that he crucified and died for our sins, not just that he shed his blood, all of that's good stuff, but that he rose again. And it is our custom at the end of each service to give everyone an opportunity to process the message of today, to pray for the application of the message, and to examine ourselves. And this morning, this altar is going to be open, this room, this space up here. And this is what we do. We bring ourselves into the presence of God, and we say, Lord, I realize something. I've paid my obeisance in time past. I want there to be a God in my life. I want there to be one who judges me righteously. I want there to be the application of that blood on my I want to live free from sin. So how do I do that? I need to come into your presence, and I need to ask you for forgiveness of anything. You say, well, you're just talking to the rank sinner in here. No, I'm talking about people who come every service into the house of God, and there might be something between me and God this morning. And I need to ask for his forgiveness, and I need to apply that so that it's not just, it's not just a, well, this is today's Sunday, so we're going to stand in front of the statue, and we're going to have a, a, a Bible study, and we're going to go home, and we're still not going to know the God that we came to worship. But today he wants to be known of you and to know you in this house today. So if you would come this morning, we're going to sing and give the Lord time to work on our hearts. But just to process the message today and say, Lord, there just might be something that's between me and you today. And I really don't have anything to bring to you except for all that I am. And I put that into your trust today. Lord, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this place, this house that we have to come and to represent, Lord God, the fact that you have shed your blood for us. Lord, I pray that you would help our hearts to acknowledge that, to understand that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, that we need your presence in our life, that we need that blood applied. And, Lord, so we come before you and we say that we're sorry for our sins. We want to repent of our sins, and we want to open up the avenue for you to come in and to move, Lord, and to understand that we need to be baptized in your name, Lord. We need to be filled with your spirit. Lord, I pray that our hearts and our minds will be set upon that fact that so your spirit, God, can come in and dwell in us and it can lead us and to guide us. In Jesus' name, help us this morning, God, as we lift up your name to draw close to you, to know you, and for you to know us, to develop a relationship that goes beyond just today, a relationship that takes me each and every day along the pathway of life and it draws me into a relationship with you that's deeper than just the superficial, deeper than just the facade. It goes deep down into my soul and into my being so that you can take up residence so your anointing can become part of my life. We praise you.